Where you from? I'm from the Bronx. Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. Cool. Well, thank you so much for having me. My name is Shante from Short and Sweet ENT. Um, can you tell us more about your book that you dropped? My kid children's book? Mm hmm Oh, uh, well, people know me from high school to graduate. People know me from graduating from high school, making it to St. John's University, mm. then hooking up with Run and Jay and Aerosmith to walk this way in our Adidas Ooh. to tell the world how tricky life could be. So if you notice on my first song, mm -hmm. I go, I'm PMC, in a place to be, I uh -oh. go to St. John's University. But since kindergarten, okay. I acquired knowledge. So when I look back at that run, I realized there was a process for me to get to point A to point B. So musically and artistically, I don't do nothing unless it has a purpose to inspire, motivate, educate while I entertain. So I've been doing this music thing for like 40 years. So people say, yo, Run DMC taught me so much. Y'all inspired us. Um, people around the globe was like, I didn't know English. And it was because of Run DMC and hip hop workers that I don't know in English. But I realized in this day and age that we live in, everything that we're up against as adults, stress, mental health issues, obstacles and adversities that exist in our world, our home world, family world, our work environment, our friendship environment, it's the same thing for the children, for their environments, is their households, their backyards, their neighborhoods, their classrooms, yes. and their schoolyards. So it's like, okay, if I was able to give the world Daryl McDaniels from 12th grade till now, I can go back to since kindergarten, <laughs> this 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 um journey for me started. So it was kindergarten, first grade, second grade, it, everything that the children are going through, especially with the bullying issue, the self-esteem issue. So I hooked up with Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. who's been experts at um communicating with our little kids but i'm thinking how could i creatively artistically make um learning experiences fun so i said okay i made all these records i've done all these videos but apparently this dmc guy was daryl in third grade oh that's it i'll put myself in third grade to do two things for the children show them that they're perfect just the way they are color of your skin, your hair, the funny things, the food that you like to eat. And because you are who you are, those characteristics of you, at that point of your life, you may not see the later on, but those characteristics of you being perfect just the way you are will allow you to succeed. Just look at DMC. They look at me as the man, their mothers and fathers, and I've been around so long their grandmothers and grandfathers know about me. They look at me as this dynamic individual. I want them to not see the greatness of the DMC. I want them to read Daryl's dream and know dreams do come true, but Daryl is just a mirror image of the greatness that's in you. I want the kids to see the potential in themselves. Yeah, well, that's awesome. I'm also an educator. Um, oh, I, I teach know. from kindergarten to third grade math and ELA. Um, so when you, like you said, back in third grade, had that vision and that dream, did you believe that you were going to be the person that you are now? No, not at all. But the reason why is because there's something called make believe. And there's something yeah. called pretend. Mm -hmm. Pre means before. So as a little kid, I had no idea. I didn't even have the desire to be in the entertainment business. But what I did do, I pretended to be a superhero on the microphone. <laughs> And I was making believe I was Melly Mel. I was Ooh. making believe I was Cool Mo D. I was making believe I was Grandmaster Cash, not seeing myself as doing it, but pretending to be something and making believe to be something is all preparation. See, I, was, I didn't want to be in the music business. Run did it. Tim and his brother, Run saw hip hop being born in this living room. Wow. But on the other spectrum, me at home, I'm just pretending to do the <laughs> hip hop thing. But when Run came to me and saw the rhymes that I was writing and saw the flow, he saw that I was prepared. So when he said, D, 
I was going to make records alone, but you're good. We're going to form a group. When it was time for me to join the group, I was in the band. Mm. So I always tell the little kids, let them tease us. Oh, you're into that corny, pretend, <laughs> make believe stuff. You stand up proudly yeah. and say, you got that right. Mm -hmm. Because all you are doing is preparing yourself for whatever it is that you want to do. Absolutely. I, I tell my children all the time, or my students all the time, you know, there's nothing in the world that you can't be. Um, we do exercises, they put, I'm, I want to be a cop, I want to be a dentist, I want to yep. be this, and I tell them, yep. the president, yep. I say, it's no dream too wild to live out. Oh, for sure, for sure. Think about how powerful our children are. These kids were asked in the Bronx to get from the Bronx. Yep. You want to dance? Yeah, we want to dance. So you could look at them and say, you want to do the hustle? No. You want to tap dance? No. You want to do the tango? No. What do you want to do? These kids are so dynamic. They say, we want to dance and spin on our heads. Ooh. The world thought that was impossible. Ha <laughs> ha. They took some cardboard. Yep. They put it down on the ground and they danced and spun on their heads. So we got to realize that the children now, especially in this day and age, have all the solutions necessary mm -hmm. to solve the problems our adults can't get right. And it's the arts. The arts succeeds where politics, politics and religion fails. There are some places where we get stuck and we start, I'm a Democrat and I'm a Republican and I'm a Christian and I'm a Muslim and I'm black and I'm your. The arts eradicate all of that stuff now. So hip hop is just basically allowing these children to be the people they already are. But a lot of times yeah. along the way, because of things like peer pressure and bullying mm -hmm. and getting teased, you know, just even seeing the value in things that are going to do them harm for this harmful behavior. There's a kid that's probably the next great ballet dancer, but would rather go make a rap yeah. song just to fit in. When I'm no, 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 we don't. Matter of fact, there's too many rappers right now. <laughs> too many. We need more ballet dancers. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That look and sound like us. So I, I want to use education and artistic expression as a way to tell these kids you're perfect and it's okay to be who you want. To be. Like yeah. they're really, you're educators and parents, but saying it forever. Now I'm realizing I can use my position as the mighty king of rock to support you. That. Well, I think as a young girl watching and seeing people on TV, representation, somebody who we wasn't obvious, and I think it's very, very important. How important is representation for you right now in today's culture? It is huge because there's a misconception that everything that is popular, dominant, or successful is only done by certain other yeah. people. But I tell the kids, when you go in those back rooms or you go into those designing me as people that look like you all that's creating everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 um, it's expedient, it's needed, it's necessary. And um, we at a point right now, we could either destroy ourselves and destroy our future, or we can show these children that who you are, where you're from, your situation doesn't define who you are, you do. But they need to see people that look like them. Yes. They need to see people that sound like them. Um, one of the things that um, I always say when I speak to a lot of kids about the whole process of school, because you know, sometimes the kids don't get taught the way that they should be taught. Yeah. But I think people like you, people like me, <clears throat> and a lot of people in this current generation, Albert Einstein, the smartest person in the history of smartness said, imagination is more important than knowledge. He didn't say knowledge wasn't necessary. Yeah. He said it's more important because once you put that knowledge with imagination, nothing is impossible. We were sitting around imagining now this hip, the DJs, MCs, graffiti writers, and break, break dancing is now <laughs> in the Olympics. Yes, it is. And it takes an imagination, I'm saying the art we used to write on walls is now in the galleries here in Soho. The style, kids sit there and say, I, I think I want a dress that looks like this or a sneaker that looks like this. I want to sound like this, like this. We have to allow these kids to say, who are you? Mm -hmm. We got to ask them, who are you and what do you want to be? And whatever they think they are and whatever they want to be, 
as possible. Yes. Well, thank you so much for um, spending some time to talk with me. I, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I can't wait to get the book so I can read it to them in oh, the fall. Um, and yeah. And oh, right yeah, here. this is the book right here. Yes. It's called Daryl's Dream, and it's all about letting the children know dreams do come true. Ask your grandfather, <laughs> grandmother. They know about me. I've been around a long time. <laughs> well, thank you so much.